Dr. Bjorn Dahl. Um, hopefully I'm saying that right. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, it is great to have you here. And as we were saying, we've crossed paths um, at certain like integrative mental health conferences and stuff. And I was so glad that you reached out and to get to know you better because gosh, of all the times in our lives and worlds, I think people really need tools and options for mental health. Um, especially, I, I mean, with the pandemic, it's just, it's, I always joke, it's been um, like the stressors to raise cortisol or um, novelty, unpredictability, threat to ego, sense of control. And we pretty much hit all of those areas. <laughs> So it's a perfect time to talk about mental health. And I know that, that people listening are going to be excited. So before I introduce you, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you're listening, you guys know I'm on here a couple times a week. Um, it'll be recorded so you can watch it later. And if you haven't gone to my YouTube channel, it's under my name, Jill Carnahan. There are like over 40 videos there. If you like these, you can go watch those for free. Um, would just love for you to subscribe there and get um, updates. And um, if you want to know more about me or free blogs, you can go to my website at jillcarnahan.com or drjillhealth.com. So I want to introduce my guest, Dr. Christina. Um, she is an authority on the treatment of mental illness, such as depression, anxiety, bipolar, and eating disorders. Um, having overcome many mental health challenges, Dr. Chris is a gifted speaker and best-selling author who loves to share her philosophy of wellness in interviews. Um, she's been with Jenny McCarthy and many more, and she's recognized as one of the top naturopathic doctors, followed by two independent organizations. Dr. Chris has helped many patients achieve physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, and she's written four books on mental health. You can find all of this information, how to work with her, um, about her book on her website, which is under her name, Dr. Christina Bjorndal, and it's uh, Dr. Christina, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-B-J-O-R-N-D-A-L. So welcome, Dr. Christina. It is so good to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. You're welcome. Um, I always like to start with story because story is kind of like why we got into doing what you're, we're doing. And of course, you have your own story, and I'm, I'd love to hear more about your um, journey. Yeah, so I haven't always been a naturopathic doctor. And really, as just as you said, I've, I have come to become one because of my own struggles with my mental health. And that really started in high school when I, I ended up I developed an eating disorder. And I also was this overachieving type. And when I got to university, I, I found myself in this place that I'd never been before, which was really uh, stuck in and debilitated with depression and paralyzed by anxiety. And I was, you know, in hindsight, realized that I was burning the candle at both ends. And eventually, when you do that, you're gonna, you're gonna run out of candle, or gas in the car, so to speak. Yeah. So we, did, we weren't talking about burnout and that kind of thing back. This is back in the mid 80s. So I was prescribed an antidepressant, which I took. And a few months later, I found myself in another place I'd never been before, which was experiencing suicidal or sorry, psycho I had a psychotic episode, a manic episode. And, and when I came out of that, I was then diagnosed with bipolar disorder type one. And I had a hard time accepting that diagnosis. And so I pretty much didn't, I pretty much wore this mask that I'm okay on the outside and sort of was marching through the world that way, but not really doing well on the inside. So a lot of turbulence and a lot of, um, disconnect with what was happening with that within me, but what I was projecting out into the world. And I was ended up working and I was in the corporate world and, and the struggle just got harder and harder and that wearing that mask got heavier and heavier. And I did succumb to a suicide attempt, which was really the turning point for me at, at that point, um, when I came out of the coma and was um, in the position that I was in, I realized, I mean, gosh, I had to nowhere else to go at that point. Mm -hmm. So I was given a book to read uh, by Marianne Williamson on, it was called A Return to Love. Mm -hmm. There's a quote on surrender. And um, in the quote, it talks about uh, all, that really, we need to learn how to love and accept ourselves. And that's what I, I realized I didn't. And so that's been the journey since then. That was a long time ago now that was 1994 mm -hmm. so for those last 35 years I've really been working on 
figuring out how do I love and accept these parts of myself, especially that diagnosis? Mm -hmm. And how do I find better ways to navigate other than um, just the psychotropic approach? Yeah. So that's, that's the journey in a nutshell. So there's lots of pieces to unpack there, but ultimately I've, I've been through a lot. And, um, and the book that I've written is called Beyond the Label because uh -huh. I want people to understand that that's, you know, it really is, it, it's really, um, it's a label, but it, and it can be helpful for sure. But, but we want to really understand what's happening within the person to have them express these, this set of symptoms that's happening within the vessel that is them. I love that. I knew I'd we'd get along just great because first of all, I love your story in bringing awareness. Here we are two professional women. And, and I re recently have been working on my book as well and writing about medical education experience and just, um, I mean, really it's abusive in some ways, as far as the hours and the way, and, and even that performance-based achieve. I mean, there's so many layers of it, but the workload and the expectations and the putting on the mask and what I think that's important here, we are again, professionals, but anyone listening can understand this. So often we go out in the workplace or, or as a mother or a wife, we put on this mask, we have it all together. And the truth is we're all human and we all struggle and we all on different levels have these emotions. This is what it is to be human. And I love that you're bringing awareness and I want to do the same of we're all in this together and I've struggled too. And I've had these, you know, but the journey is common to all humans. And when we yeah. start to put a mask on then we are separating ourselves from the connection that can actually help to heal us. Exactly. That's beautifully said. Exactly. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, gosh, I, I would have loved to have gone the medical doctor route. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I went back to school when I was 33 to do the retraining, uh, actually to go back to high school to get the science prerequis prerequisites to go on to naturopathic school. But I also felt like the, the rigorousness of that with the sleep deprivation and the demand, level of demands, I wasn't sure that I would actually, would actually be healthy. It yeah. wouldn't be a healthy approach. And so I, I opted not to do it that way, but you were probably right. Because as I write about it, I'm like, holy cow, this was, and I had like, had to like, I look back and I dissociate, I suppress some of it. Now I'm actually dealing with all that, but I'm like, wow, that was really traumatic. And that's like common. It's not unique to me. Everybody, most allopathic docs went through a lot of that and whether it was hours regulation or, and the biggest thing that I, that I was trying to write about was how, uh, especially as professionals or, or if we're caring for patients, I think that there's this idea that we have to come with all the answers and that we're all put perfectly put together. And I've seen right. this in other circles too. It's not just doctors. Um, and the truth is the more we are embracing our authentic humanity and our own failures and our own shortcomings and our own emotions, the more we can actually really show up for the patient. So what you've done is like dive into this journey, find healing for yourself. And I love going beyond the label because we're both taught to get a diagnosis and that's the end story. So an ICD-10 now, a code that says you have celiac disease or you have depression or you have whatever label and that label is the end game. And then you have a drug that treats that label. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Like what we're going to go into today is the label is only the start. And yes, it gives us a framework to say, you're kind of in this framework but it's not an identity. It doesn't define you. And the other piece about it is it's only for both of us where we, what we do in medicine is why did that happen? Asking the questions and then trying to navigate, how can we reverse that label that you've been given? So talk to us a little bit about, cause I love yeah. the name of your book and tell me more about what you go into in that. Cause that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, exactly. So that, that it really is a framework. And, and one of the really, the differentiating factors we want to keep in the forefront of our mind is we're more interested in you as an individual than we are in the disease that has you. And, and, I, and I, I get that it's important to understand about the disease piece of the puzzle, but not more so than the individual that has that you know, particular label or, or condition. So first really stepping back and, and to address that idea of why, understanding that there's four levels to us as human beings. There's the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And all four areas are important to take a look at. Now, I started my my journey in this uh, world of, of towards this idea of healing on the physical level. And at that time, I was taking five psychotropic medications. And then I went to see a nutritionally oriented psychiatrist. His name was Dr. Abraham Hoffer. And he started, <laughs> Love yeah, it. he's, he's a very uh, well uh, known in, in the, 
in these nutritional world. And uh, yeah, yes. And so he started me on many, many supplements. And, and the interesting thing was I wasn't doing well when I went to see him, I was quite depressed and I was still feeling a lot of anxiety and I carried both approaches along together at the same time. And then I had my first year where I felt free of these, these two pieces, the depression and the anxiety and was stable from the other that hadn't, hadn't had a, anything to do with mania for over a decade. So I almost felt like, what was that all about? Like, is yeah. that, you know, uh, was that just a one-off or is that ever going to happen again? And, and I hadn't had that stability that, that I'd had in the 15 years prior. And so I knew there was something to this approach, but eventually I ended up bumping up against these other areas, this, this physical, the, the mental, emotional, spiritual side. Mm -hmm. So just, just to complete the physical conversation, I just want people to understand that there's essentially three macro systems within the body, this, this body, this container that is you. So you have your neurotransmitters, you have your neuroendocrine or your hormonal system. Then you have your organs of detoxification and your immune system and mental health symptoms can result in any one of those three, if not all three of those. And it was really telling for me when I started Dr. Hoffer's protocol, I got better for half of the month. And then I realized, I mean, I had no medical knowledge at that time, but now in hindsight, I realized, oh gosh, my hormones were really out of whack too. And my organs of detoxification they certainly weren't working the way they needed to be. So everything interacts with each other within the body. But the, the good news story here is once you work on one part, it's like a ripple effect and other things start to come online and, and improve for you. So I don't, you know, just, just know that you, it, it can be, you can start where it feels comfortable for, comfortable for you, but the key is we want to get started. Right. I love that. And I love that you talk about the hormones, the neurotransmitters and all the interaction, the detox. And what I found, I've done neurotransmitter work, done hormone work, done thyroid work, all these pieces, but sometimes you go deeper with the detox and then those things kind of balance out. You know, you can't yeah. necessarily ignore one or the other, but I feel like the hormones and neurotransmitters can even be a superficial level compared to the deep D deeper detox work, because when you get that working, sometimes the hormones will start to regulate themselves. Exactly. How would you approach if, if a patient came in depression, anxiety, maybe they're on meds, what would be your approach to that patient? So first thing is one of the key questions is why, right? Like we talked about, or when, when did this first, you know, when yeah. did this happen? And what was going on at that time? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it, it really is about this trauma or experience or situation that they're having a hard time navigating often on a on, a, on an emotional level. Yes. So all, always wanting to know how severe they are, whether they're in a crisis state, you know, making mm -hmm. sure that we can, um, you know, have to give the right level of intervention for the degree or depth that they're experiencing. And then working through starting with the foundation, diet, mm -hmm. sleep, exercise, and then that stress management piece, which I think is, is really big. So there's so many pieces with those first three diet, sleep and exercise on just on that physical level on a lifestyle uh, basis that can shift the dial for us. But when we're not feeling great, the first thing that goes often is the diet and the movement, right? We, yes. we have such a hard time when we're depressed to, to get ourselves going because that's lack of motivation chicken or egg right because you, totally. you need to move and we know like activity is so profoundly antidepressive and good food but yeah. if you're stuck in that i would say it's almost like they you're in this pit and you need like someone to help you pull yourself out so there does need you know whether it's community or a doctor or someone like you um what would you say to someone if and i want to go back to the basics too but the people who are either listening now or have experiences where you're stuck in that place if you feel like you can't get out of bed or you can't mm -hmm. Where's the yeah. starting place to get yourself just enough out of that so you can start doing what you need to do? Yeah, the first place really is to if you're and so on a first I'll just start off and hopefully this may help people who are listening that listen there's been times when it's taken me two, four, six, sometimes 10 hours just to move from the bed to the door like getting dressed to the door, putting the shoes on and heading out. Mm -hmm. But never once did I ever come back feeling worse yeah. than when I went out. So it's, it's really a matter of leaning in if you can and digging really deep and shifting within you this, this I can't to this I can or I will or I want mindset. Yes. And, and I get it, it's, I get it, it's hard, it is hard. But, uh, so to make it easier, what I've done recently 
is I have an accountability person who okay. calls me and I, that phone rings and, and I'm not allowed to say, I, I can't do it today. I love <laughs> so, it. <laughs> so I'm kind of on the hook in, yeah. in a sense. I know that's not always easy for everyone, but it is something that people don't think about doing. Mm -hmm. So find somebody that you can perhaps reach out to or ask, or the other part is when you're feeling this way, it really is like asking a deaf person to hear mm -hmm. asking a depressed person to reach out is, is really hard. It's like we physically are yes. cut off at the arms. So this is where the support piece is really, really important. So if there is someone in your life, a husband, a, you know, a, a partner, a friend, a colleague, somebody, a parent mm -hmm. that, that knows you and knows if you can, if you have just enough within you to, to, to raise your hand and say, actually, I do need some help because we are so busy wearing the mask. Yes. Right? Is there anything today, know. if you're listening, like, I just want to speak to you who's listening and maybe the, some of this is resonating because this is we're winter, at least here yeah. in Colorado. Yeah. yeah. And it's darker. So you have the seasonal piece, the lack of sunshine for some people. Um, and if you're listening and you feel just that step of telling someone, because what Dr. Christina and I were both talking about in the beginning is part of what kept us in trouble in training or in our past was feeling like we had to have it all together and we had to put on a mask and we had to pretend like everything was okay. And we're literally sitting here as professionals giving you permission to it's okay to not be okay. Like if that's all you hear today, it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to be struggling. All you have to do is tell somebody. Mm -hmm. That's right. And there's so much power in that. Mm -hmm. There really is. So, and a lot of relief can come from that because yeah. it's heavy holding up this weight, mm -hmm. right? It's heavy. And, and, and I guess that is the message just to echo what you said that you actually don't need to hold it up anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're, that's what we're here for each other. It's like that. I think if anything, this next decade, people are going through transitions. All of us are going through our own journey, but I think we're going deeper than we ever had to go in some cases. And the biggest thing is how do we show up more authentically, which can be sometimes showing up when we're falling apart. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. 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 So then, so you're looking at hormones and neurotransmitters and oh yeah. What else would you do with a person who's so again, getting out of bed is huge, getting some accountability, love yeah. those basic steps. What else? Well, and the other piece then with coming back to the diet piece, and I know a lot of people think, oh, diet, you know, insert eye roll kind of thing, but it, you know, it's really important because for me anyway, when I'm depressed, I'm not eating. In fact, I had one pastor once who said to me, asked me if I had an eating disorder, which, you know, I'd had in the past, but I said, no, this is, this is depression. Like I don't eat. And, yeah. and so if you think about it, what is, you know, how's your brain going to run? How's your brain going to make neurotransmitters and hormones if you're not eating much yeah. you don't you you need fuel for the body and understand that serotonin which is the main neurotransmitter that often is discussed when it comes to depression is derived from an essential amino acid which is called tryptophan which you cannot physically make on your own you have to get it from your diet and a really eye-opening piece for me was when i went to second year nutrition class we had to analyze our our diets as an assignment. Mm -hmm. Now I had gotten better because I was started this supplement protocol that was supporting this pathway in my body, this tryptophan serotonin pathway. But when I analyzed my diet and remember I'd had an eating disorder, so I'd had a lot of cracks in my mm -hmm. nutritional foundation. The only essential amino acid I was deficient in still was tryptophan. Wow. Really eye opening for me. So this other little book that I've created is called the essential diet. Ooh. eating for mental health. So understand that there's essential nutrients and for many for these neurotransmitters and hormones, dopamine is another one, a really mm -hmm. important neurotransmitter when it comes to addiction. Yeah. Uh, so the key that I, point I'm trying to make is we want to fuel your body with something that's healthful. And again, I know it's hard when we're not feeling great to, to, to do some of these things that I'm asking you to dig deep to do. But again, the support piece is where this can also help you be successful. So just know that the food piece of the puzzle is really is a really big, huge piece. So I love that. And you mentioned sleep. Let's talk a little bit about sleep because a lot of times that's one of the whether you have anxiety and you can't sleep or you're sleeping, you know, 15, 16 hours a day. How would you address the sleep issues? Because I feel like that's such a core um, eating and sleeping are really, really core before we even go into nutrition and our nutrients, like actual supplementation. Yes. Um, so what would you talk yeah. to about sleep? 
Yeah, so uh, sort of different ends of the spectrum. So with depression, like mo it, it can be either with depression. Some people are sleeping too much and some people are not, are sleeping, you know, they're kind of more wired and um, with the anxiety piece there and they're not sleeping as well. And then the whole, if, if we go to the other end of the, the spectrum with mania, you know, people yeah. aren't sleeping at all. But I'm gonna keep it more within the normal yeah. piece of the puzzle here. And so sleep and, and exercise feed on each other. And, and so oftentimes, again, if you're not sort of burning any energy, you're not gonna feel tired. Mm -hmm. So that's where that movement piece and the fresh air and, and getting some vitamin D, these all sort of help support sleep. And what often is, is affecting people's sleep is stress and this understanding about the, the rhythm in the body with the two main hormones that can affect sleep, which are, is cortisol and melatonin. So cortisol has an inverse relationship with melatonin and it inhibits it. So the hours that you spend before bed need to be calming and supportive towards sleep. So this isn't when we want to have the, the big discussions with our partner, or this isn't when we want to watch a violent or get on video games and play really sort of adrenaline boosting, stimulating. We mm -hmm. want to be as calm as we can in those hours before bed. And really understanding that the adrenal glands, which is an important gland in the body that has a relationship with cortisol and it produces cortisol, as a hormonal, serves a hormonal function. They really like rhythm and routine. So going to bed at the same time and getting up at the same time, eating at the same time, exercising at the same time. I know, again, we're not to be robots and so structured and rigid that you know, there isn't flexibility and fluidity within that. But just this idea of routine is, is a really important piece to our health too. So the other thing I want to say about sleep is, is the state of mind you're in when you go to sleep. So I have spent decades in depression mm -hmm. and I can share with you that I would go to bed every night, literally asking for myself to not wake up in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that's not a great way no. to head off the, your, to, yeah. start, to finish your day. And then I would wake up in the morning, obviously, because I'm still here. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd open my eyes and I would be, I would be starting mad almost like, Oh God, not another day. So how do you imagine my day went? Exactly. Not very good, right? Not very good. Found. So first so all, go ahead. Keep. Yeah, going. I just want to finish it. So now the shift and what I'd like mm -hmm. people to do, if this is a simple place for you to start is just going to bed with gratitude mm -hmm. for one thing. Even there's a lot of neuroplastic research around gratitude alone. And now I go to bed at night, grateful for the day that I've had opening my eyes in the morning, grateful that I have another day to serve. Yeah. Huge shift, huge shift, night and day. And, and so and this that's is, all. Yeah. What you're talking about is so critical though. People might just blow right by this mindset. And I'm not saying that when you're struggling and you're in that pit and you need help with a friend that we can like, you still, it's okay to ask for help. It's not like we're saying just a positive attitude is the only, the only thing you need. That's, that's not it, but this is critical. And I love that you're talking about this because um, first of all, routines, I feel like my su secret superpower is I'm routined and I have a nightly ritual and sleep is my superpower. I literally like that is my superpower for performance. And yeah. so I protect that. Like if there's a late night of some event, I mean, once in a rare while I might do it. Of course, COVID is different right now with all that. But um, before I would often say no, because I knew that was so precious to have that sleep and that time. And it'd be rare that I'd break that because my performance was based on my mood performance and, and everything energy was based on great sleep. So for me, everybody's different, but I found that an hour or two before bed, I don't get on the computer. Um, yeah. I take a nightly every night Epsom salt bath with usually lavender or eucalyptus oil. Um, and with that bath, I'll do something, either read a book or listen to a podcast, something that for me is like a, or just music, um, something that's calming. Uh, sometimes I'll read scripture or some sort of meditation, um, but something that fills my heart with, like you said, love and gratitude. We know the heart um, coherence, which is when your heart is in a state of gratitude or love that's profoundly healing and helpful. And like you said, what you were just describing before was probably the non-coherence going to bed and waking up. And then now you're in coherence and that actually makes a big difference. Uh, there's apps you can do like heart math. There's a lot of different um, heart rate variability types of things, which get your heart into this rhythm. But if you don't even have an app, 
all it takes is really feeling the deep love and gratitude. And I think this goes into, I want you to comment on this, but I heard you earlier say something so important. I grew up in a very uh, state, um, I had a very short period in high school where I had an eating disorder as well, but those things come from um, either lack of control or self-loathing. There's these pieces of like not loving yourself. And I heard you say something earlier that I want to talk about. And I literally, one of the things that's transformed my health is in the evening, I literally will hold my heart and say, thank you heart for beating another day. Thank you cells for giving me life and breath and like so much love for my body who was performed day after day after day for four plus years and kept me breathing alive and just like this, but I never used to be that way. I never used to have that deep abiding love and gratitude for my own cells and my body that's kept me alive and kept me thriving. And it has transformed my health. I mean, I saw labs change because of that practice. So talk wow. just a little bit about the importance of actually caring for ourselves and, and, and loving ourselves instead of punishing ourselves and loathing ourselves, because that's a big part of this. So I think it's not, it's, I think it is the most, well, it is Three. Yeah, it's a big part of it. And, and, you know, a key question that I ask everybody is on a scale of one to 10, you know, how do you love yourself? How much do you love yourself? Your, your sense of self-esteem, your, your self-worth. And, and the problem is that women often were not reared to, you know, it's, it's almost like, oh, that's, don't be, don't be too boastful. Right. Don't be right. too much. Don't be too this. Don't be too that. And it's not when I, I'm talking from this, you know, just deep sense of, of gratitude for the gift that you are as a human being. Yes. And most patients that I work with do not have a high number to that question. And so to me, and, and nor did I, nor did I, gosh, anyone who's trying to, to um, not be here anymore is obviously not loving and accepting who they are. And I, so really for me, if, you know, when we talk about the root cause, right, a lot with, with functional medicine, naturopathic mm -hmm. medicine, we're wanting to figure out what's the root of this. And there can be more than one root, mm -hmm. could be more than one thing going on. But for me, I think a really important piece is I, I am adopted. And so that in utero experience has informed my mm -hmm. The, the wirings in the brain and just the way that I perceive and have perceived the world from learning that I was adopted and, and, and so forth. Hence this overachieving piece to yep. compensate for this sense of lack that I felt within this not worthy piece because of the faulty belief that I wasn't wanted. Yeah. So it, it, you know, the heart, I often feel like we're talking about the wrong organ, even in mental health, yeah. everyone's focused on the brain and, and don't get me wrong, I, I, of course, that's a piece of it. But what about the heart? Yes. Right. And I, I, some, I share with patients that, you know, oftentimes I feel many of my depression, depressive episodes have been this battle, if you will, between these two sides of myself, the, the ego or the mind mm -hmm. that wants to go left and the heart of the soul, the spirit that wants to go right. And I don't know which master to listen to. Yes. And so I get, I, I literally... I'm paralyzed. Paralyzed, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Christiane Northrup talks about how the electrical activity in the heart is, I think it was 50 times more than the electrical activity in the brain. Yeah. And another piece, I, mean, I could talk about this probably for another hour, but the other piece I'll just mention before we, you know, we want to move on is that in, in my husband's first nation, so in, in, in Canada, um, there, you know, he, first nation healers talk about that the journey from the mind to the heart is a very short distance. Yeah. Right. But yeah. for some, it takes a lifetime to walk. I so, love this. This is yeah. so important for people to hear, because again, I, I feel like some of my biggest transformation, I was very analytical background, science, engineering, and I would always try, try to make sense here. When I started to drop down and feel and make decisions from this more intuitive heart-based center, it was so much more powerful in the intelligence that came. Because again, I always say um, our analytical mind might be able to analyze a hundred pieces of data very quickly, but our heart intuitive level, we can take a million pieces of data. The subconscious can take that in in a second and actually make a very good science-based <laughs> decision. So that is so critical to really feel that and to feel that you're loved. And, you know, I um, see patients of all backgrounds. I know that I love that you talk about the spiritual. I'm Judeo-Christian background. And one thing that's helped me is like, I'm a daughter of the King and it's relevant to even you as a, like, I just literally like, and again, so that may not resonate for you listening, but if it does for me, it's actually helped me. Like, it's not about ego. It's about who's am I? And my identity is a bigger divine 
who like I am a daughter of the king in that sense. Right. And so that gives me like, and, and again, if you've been adopted or otherwise, it's like we're wanted, we're chosen, we're, we have a purpose and like finding a place for you within your belief system of purpose that's greater than yourself, something to connect to that's greater than yourself, something that's guiding you that's deeper, like these things are really important. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. And it, there's a quote by Joseph Campbell that I, I really love to, to share, which is the heart must usher the mind into the zone of revelation. Mm -hmm. Wow. So by that, we mean we want to learn how to lead from a heart centered place. So, and then let the mind figure out all the 50 yeah. million ways to analyze the data. <laughs> right. But most people are doing it the other way around. They're leading from the mind and then the mind often gets stuck in fear. Yeah. And then the ego gets involved and then we get run by the amygdala. And then we get stuck in these sort of four states, you know, fight, flight, freeze or fawn. And we mm -hmm. kind of don't know where to go. And, and we get stuck in analysis mode. And, but if you can learn to drop in. Yes drop in and out of of the head and into the body and listen to yes. listen to the beat listen to like I often say listen how are you going to hear the voice of God if you're always talking I love that <laughs> like, I'm not going to hear the messages because you're like blah 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 blah, blah. do this give me this right you know? right right so, so, I, so this so what I'm leading into here is this concept of stillness oh love love a couple of years ago, one of my off staff gave me a little thing for Christmas that said, be still. And I was one of those people who didn't stop moving. <laughs> I can, I can. But, well, but, right. But honestly, what I realized that's a trauma based response, because when you, when, when I first started to stop moving, it was terrifying because I had to deal with myself. And then as I got used to it and dealt with those emotions, now I can sit for hours and be comfortable and, and hear a much deeper sense of truth. Um, but I remember the days when I couldn't sit still. <laughs> and I'll tell you, if you're out there and you're busy, 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 you can't sit still. There's probably trauma that you need to work on. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the healing really, truly is in the feeling. And I layered myself up with a lot of armor, right? A lot mm -hmm. of, again, busyness in, in busyness in doing and busyness in awards and, you know, all these ego minded things, but very empty on the inside, mm -hmm. never satisfied, you know, you'd win one thing or achieve something and then not even pausing to enjoy it just onto the next. And and our society is very driven by this concept of, I'll use the word status, but it's not, mm -hmm. it's, it's really driving us in the wrong direction, actually. And what we need as human, as the human family is connection and community and love and respect for the mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're pointing the finger at someone, there's three pointing back at you. So this idea of whatever we don't like in another is something perhaps that we're unwilling to acknowledge or look at within ourselves, but it's there, but it's more like the dark side or the shadow side, but it's, it's just more love is what's going to heal us, not the other. And so anyways, I know it's difficult and hard when hurt people hurt people because you're, because they're hurt people. And if you're sitting there being a hurt person, it, it's hard. Yeah. It's really yeah. hard to rise above, like, mm -hmm know people suggest and and so anyways I know this is these are tall orders and um but I guess the main thing is is if you don't love who you are then that's what we got to look at why mm -hmm. Yeah, who exactly. Going to that. that, who taught you that you weren't right. worthy of or love. Worthy, right? And I've heard the commonalities to all humanity is feeling unworthy, unlovable, or helpless. Like there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. We're not different. We're not alone. We're not unique. We all have these common fears, and some of them, you know, as we work through those and find out we are lovable, we are worthy, we're not helpless. But those are the common things. So if you're out there, probably one of those three is at the base of some of the, the fears and the things that we are. Um, talking about. Let's shift in the last um, short bit here about, um, we talked about diet and sleep. We talked about a lot about spiritual and connection and all of this. So two things, one, one is we're getting out of a pandemic and we've been isolated, a lot of us. And to me, that's just so sad because while I don't think that um, it was wrong to try to take precautions, um, I also feel like isolation has been ignored as a cause of stress, high cortisol and immune dysfunction. Like this is a big deal oxytocin is made it comes with hugging and touching and we're not having as much of that so any suggestions of how to stay connected number one so i'll let you answer that and then in, in a few minutes if there's any like basic nutritional supplements we don't give medical advice but some of the basic things that you might start with with someone who's suffering from depression or anxiety mm -hmm. 
so that yeah, gosh, I mean, it's really, it's really been a year, right? And 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 I, I don't think anyone expected it to be going on this long. Right. Mm-hmm. So definitely take precautions and and, but there's, I think there's more that we could be doing than simply just washing our hands and mm-hmm. wearing a mask. And I and I think about the diversity of the gut microbiome and how important these things are. And I I do, so I won't go down that path too far because that wasn't your question so how do we create community and connection in a time of when we're told to isolate and that's difficult but I think the best suggestions that I have been doing for my own self is maintaining because listen nature's open 24 7 yes to nature you know this this earth's playground is always open so get out there and socially distance with your friend, colleague, you know, again, whoever, it, whoever it may be. You can have your pods, right? Like I have yeah. a pod of a few friends that I connect with and those are, the only, you know, and that's. A yeah. great- and, I, and you have to be doing that. We have to be doing that. We have to be um, making regular dates. And, and I'm, I hesitate to say meeting up like this on zoom uh, because it, but I, but I also think it's important. Like it, yeah. I, I feel better. Like, uh, you know, I, I see your beautiful face and I, I just feel the energy. And, and so it's like, it, it's better than sitting by yourself alone. Um, it, it, so set those dates up as, as, as much as you may be grudge technology or what have you, right. embrace it. Learn, this is a time to learn to embrace some of these things. Mm-hmm. And so I think that you just have to work within the, the parameters that may be in your specific area, but mm-hmm. isolation doesn't have to mean that you're completely cut off. Yeah. Right? That's not what it, they're saying. Mm-hmm. So just not meeting in big groups and keeping it to one mm-hmm. or you know one within your pod and pets are another great yes <laughs> great piece they, they don't I don't hear you know pets they're very loving and so get a pet friend if you don't already have one or borrow your neighbor's dog if you have to yeah. but there's a lot of research just around pet, pet this concept of Absolutely. I love that unconditional love. I think they show, I have two dogs that are actually sitting right down here. Beside me. Yeah. I heard them bark a minute ago, but, um, but yeah, it's such a, I always joke. I would have needed a lot more therapy if I didn't have my two puppies because they're so like, they, they show us how to love unconditionally. Like right. there's just, um, so what about basics? Again, we want to make recommendations, but you mentioned tryptophan, 5 yes. is another one. What are some of the things that nutrient wise we could do to support um, depression or anxiety? Yeah. So the biggest thing, so just speaking broadly in terms of diet, let's focus a little bit more on like if hopefully not offending any uh, vegans or vegetarians, but just if you're eating a regular diet, Mm -hmm. then shifting the emphasis with your plate, increasing 50%, making sure 50% is vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then you're having the protein and a little bit of a complex carb. Let's get them out of your diet as much of the white Mm -hmm. products as we can, you know, the pots, the, the, those, you know, eat drinking herbal teas water in terms of supplementation this is where it's you know it's helpful to work with somebody i don't believe in supplementing yourself completely out of something but there are some foundational supplements that i think everyone should be taking so vitamin d is one of them omega-3s is another Mm -hmm. one a healthy a probiotic when you you don't take the same probiotic forever but supporting your gut Mm -hmm. really important for the immune system but also the brain there's a huge gut brain relationship i i forgot to tell you that which is an important piece of this whole puzzle that i did a year of antibiotics prior to developing the eating disorder we didn't learn about this research or connection until many many years later so huge gut brain relationship so and then B vitamins are extremely important to make this tryptophan pathway work. I don't usually, I usually always want everyone to eat tryptophan forming foods, not take tryptophan because there's another pathway tryptophan can go down, which we won't get into the scientifics of it, but just yeah. understand 5-HTP magnesium, uh, also very important different mm-hmm. forms of magnesium, the bisnite form better for anxiety and depression. So, so, you know, we've just rattled off these four or five things, nutrients that are, mm-hmm. are, really important. Always remember the diet piece, but it's, it's difficult sometimes the farther down you are that, you know, that pit we talked about to just take, you know, just to eat an orange, that's not going to cut it. Right. You're going to need a little bit more fuel to get your, your plane off the ground, get you to cruising altitude, get you feeling better. Then we can pull back Mm -hmm. once you're feeling better, but sometimes you need more fuel, i.e. more supplements, more support at the beginning. 
So love what you're saying about uh, food first. You need adequate protein. Um, and you can take, if you're struggling with malabsorption or some issue, you can take amino acids as free form. Yeah. Although I still prefer food um, that can be helpful for some people. And I like the full amino acids versus just a branch chain. Cause you're only going to get this like bodybuilding thing versus mm -hmm. the full amino spectrum is a lot better for brain health gut. I love that you mentioned that because I used to get college kids that like, oh, I'm suffering from depression or anxiety and say, well, we're going to do a stool test. And they kind of look at me like, you know, stool test, why do yeah. I, but they, what, what we talk about very quickly was your gut microbiome has everything to do with your brain. And like you said, we could do a whole nother hour on the pathways in the gut and some of these abnormal pathways that cause inflammation or abnormal chemicals that cause depression, anxiety, et cetera. Um, things that you've probably tried. If you're listening out there, GABA can be very helpful for anxiety. Yes. Theanine is from green tea. You can also take it as a supplement. Very helpful. 5-HTP um, tryptophan are precursors of serotonin. There's a small percentage of people that have this weird pathway way that won't do well on those, but many people do. Um, tyrosine can make more dopamine. So that's an easy amino acid. And again, this is with your doctor. You want to look at dosing and stuff, but there's a, the really neat thing is there's a lot of amino acids that we can push different pathways by giving them selectively. Um, and then what you mentioned earlier, cortisol can be too high or too low, and it can be either way pre um, present with depression or anxiety. So looking at your, um, with your doctor, your hormone levels, your cortisol levels, um, all of those things can be helpful. Um, we're just about out of time. So tell us, um, first of all, any last bits of words of wisdom, if people are listening and they're struggling, um, you've given some great advice, any last parting words of wisdom here? Yeah. I, just the last thing I do, what I mentioned is so, so now I'm 54 mm -hmm. and, or, or will be too fast down the road here. And so menopause is also an important time when things can shift and that's mm -hmm. hormones. So just meant you, you, you Dr. Jill was just recapping about Thank hormones, you. but just also remember not only thyroid, but I know in cortisol, but estrogen, progesterone, yes. DHA, those are other important ones too. So the last thing really, I just want to say is if you're listening and you know somebody who's struggling, please reach out and keep reaching out. Don't take it personally. If somebody you reach out once and they didn't call you back, sometimes you have to call 10 times yeah. or actually go and knock on the door. Right. And if you're somebody who's listening and you are struggling, I really hope that I, one of the reasons, the main reason, the only reason I share my story is to give you hope that this is a journey and th there is solutions to what you're going through. You do not have to stay where you are. And as you learn to navigate these four big areas, the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, you will move into a, you know, into a better place of wellness. So that's my hope for you. And, and that's, I just think there's too many people suffering and struggling. Uh, and it's just, mental health was already a problem yeah. before this pandemic around the virus. You know, it's, it's, and it's only, I think, getting, going to deepen, deepen the divide in the mental health uh, problem that was already there. I couldn't agree more. It's like revealing for me, it's um, not for me, but for all of us, really, there is if we have a greater purpose, a greater source, and we've done some of the work and we're all in the process. So I don't mean to sound like I'm any further ahead than any of you listening, because I'm in there just with you. But um, as we find that deeper meaning or purpose, the waves of life can come and the struggles and the difficulties, and they're going to come. I always say you're either in the midst of a crisis or about to go through one, or you've just gone through one. It's just one, one of those three, it's either coming or you've just been through it or you're in the, you know, so you can't expect that it's going to be easy all the time. But if you have some sort of a purpose, you have this deep abiding love and um, some sort of a connection to the divine and a greater purpose, those things can really take you through because you have like an anchor, you have something that keeps you stable in the midst of the storms of life. And for me, that's, that's what I found to be the most important because life will bring storms, period. Um, it's yeah. inevitable. It's life change is inevitable. Um, but if we have something that grounds us or anchors us, that can be core. Um, so where can people find, we talked about your website, but repeat it again in your books. Um, if people want to find out more about you or read what you've written, give us the resources and I'll be sure to add the links too. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, just, and I'll just say, just understand that you don't have to be at the mercy of your mind, right? You yes. can learn to manage it. And, uh, so doctor, so dr, Christina Bjorndal.com, B J O R N D A L. I have the beyond the label, which is a, I think a really great, Book that guides you through these 10 steps that we we 
that I think that I've that I've walked through to regain my mental health. So that's a great book. There's the essential diet, there's a journal, and then a book that I've co authored called from shadows to light a whole human approach to mental health. I have created an online program as well that goes a little bit deeper into each of the 10 steps. So that's an option for people Perfect. to check out. And th those are the main things, you know, the usual social media channels, I I'm, I do my best <laughs> to be there, <laughs> but I'm yeah. grateful for people like you who are further down than me that know how to do more. Than oh, I, do. I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're in it together, but I'll be sure and share this too. If you want to follow um, Dr. Bjornal and I, um, and uh, if you haven't been a part of, uh, well, again, check out her program, check out her books, you have her website, I will put the link down below. And if you aren't part of my newsletter, often I'll share these kind of interviews and things too. You can go to my website, jillcarnahan.com and, and sign up for that. Well, Dr. Bjornal, it has been just a pleasure and the time went way too quickly. <laughs> it, did. it was like, oh gosh. Yeah, I know. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Okay. Yes. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you.